As protein prices have increased, farmers are looking at being able to grow more protein on the farm to offset purchased protein supplements. The growing of a straight combinable legume crop such as beans and to a lesser extent peas is an option on Scottish arable farms and is usually done to provide a valuable uh, rotational break crop. More recently, livestock producers have been looking at intercropping where a legume and cereal are grown together, then harvested as a whole crop or allowed to fully ripen and then combined. In this video, I'll be focusing on making ensiled whole crop. Research work by SRUC on intercropping increases the yield over a straight legume crop. This is because of the differences between the root structures of the sown plants. The cereal also provides a structure to support the legume and make the harvesting operation easier. Trials have found when the goal is to optimize the protein level in the crop, the normal straight seed rate of the cereal should be reduced to 40%, and the normal uh, pea, bean, or lupin seed rate is reduced to 60%. So for example, a mix of barley and peas, the normal seed rate of barley being say 190 kilograms a hectare, would be reduced to 75 kilograms a hectare, and the normal pea rate of say 220 would be reduced to 130 kilograms per hectare. There are potential conflicts when sowing different seeds together, particularly when the seeds are of different sizes. An example of the extremes would be sowing spring beans uh, and a cereal, or, or clover and a cereal. A more compatible option would be peas and a cereal, as the seed uh, is the same size and the seed rates are broadly similar. Depending on the equipment available, it may be possible to sow at different depths in one pass, but the only way to get the sowing depth right it may require two passes. The fineness of the seed bed will be determined by the seeds being sown. A normal cereal seed bed tilth will suit peas and lupins. Clover will require a fine seed bed, which is then well consolidated, but beans which are sown at depth can tolerate quite a rough seed bed. Legumes are less tolerant of low pH, so avoid sowing in fields below pH of 6, or lime in advance so that the pH is rising. It is preferable to apply phosphate and potash to the seed bed or place it with the seed if your seed drill allows. The need for nitrogen is reduced by the inclusion of the legume and applying more than 20 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare will reduce the nodulation formation on the legume and the nitrogen fixation and benefit to the following crop. As the crop is being taken off as a whole crop and ensiled, there may be no need for a herbicide. Equally, legumes such as red clover and peas can have a smothering effect on weeds and help to block out light. Unfortunately, the choice of herbicide for controlling broadleaf weeds is limited. Pendimethylin uh, pre-emergence is an option to control both broadleaf and grass weeds, and some of the old hormone herbicides such as MCPB and 2,4-DB can be used to control some broadleaf weeds. It's best always to get advice from a basis qualified agronomist on the crops that you're growing. The preferred harvesting method is to use a forager with a cutting table. A mower with the conditioner not engaged can be used, but there will be an increased loss of grain and a soil contamination risk. As the purpose of the whole crop is to maximize the protein level, the timing is dictated by this crop. So peas wait until the peas are fully formed and the foliage is turning from green to yellow. Lupins, foliage is turning from green to yellow. And for beans, foliage is green, but the pods are turning black and the beans are rubbery. High protein forages have a buffering effect on pH, affecting the speed of the fermentation. Therefore, inoculant is required to accelerate this fermentation and provide pit stability. The most appropriate inoculant will depend on the crop mix and the expected dry matter of the harvested crop. 